I want to preface start with this video by stating that I love this franchise. I grew up with this franchise. But when this franchise makes mistakes, it is your duty to call out its mistakes. And if the developers behind that cause a significant problem to the very thing you enjoy, you need to call it out. And it pains me to do this because I love Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I appreciate the improvements that the sequel made, but the sequel is trapped beneath all of its performance issues. Because I don't see no one complaining about the story, the introductions that they did to combat, like the new additions, the additions to more open world, open exploration, and how this story is more original around this time around rather than just the dogmatic rebellion versus the empire type story that we get during the galactic civil war period so i do this to star wars jedi survivor because i love star wars and i'm not just going to blindly hate it like most people for clicks and revenue jedi survivor at the end of the day it's a good story it's a great premise it further expands star wars but what holds it back is developer pushing company pushing and not enough time to allow this game to cook in the oven and being the Star Wars game that it was meant to be. Now, eventually they will get to that point. It will eventually probably fire off on all four cylinders, but not right now. It absolutely in this state, it's unacceptable, but I'm going to do what no other reviewer does. I'm going to individually talk about its bad parts and I'm going to separate the good because that's a lot of problem reviewers have. They conflate everything rather than just analyzing everything and breaking things apart the way they should. And I am no fair share to making my mistakes when it comes to reviews, but when it comes to Star Wars, I am passionate and I will break down the things that people will not tell you. And what it mainly is and what it mainly comes down to is the problem with this game is its performance. Okay, you do have people that say, oh, we didn't like it bigger than the first game. Well, then just go play the first game because you can't do a sequel and just do a rehash or a repeat because that's what it sounds like a lot of these people want. They want a rehash and a repeat. And, and if they get that, then they're just going to say, well, why didn't they do something different? Well, they did something different. That's the problem. I also got to say with Star Wars fans, when they get something new and different, they complain. They get rehashes. They complain. There is no pleasing a Star Wars fan. It's just the way it is. Inexcusable. This is absolutely unforgivable and unexcusable. EA and Respawn. More so EA because Respawn is a good developer. Unfortunately, they're just owned by one of the greediest companies that produces the most shittiest sports series on the fucking face of the gaming industry, and they constantly nickel and dime their players, but I have to also blame Respawn for not pushing that this game still needed more time. It still needed to be delayed, but remember, they are working their jobs. They have to do what they're told, so if EA forces them to push it out the door, what are you going to want them to do? Lose their jobs potentially and having the guilt of being put people possibly put out of their homes because they didn't want to do what their bosses told them to do? Well, unfortunately, that's the probably the state of development and style of business that we live in this world today. But Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I, like many people, after playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, we were ready for a sequel. And the developers at Respawn really did craft a superior story they perfected the lightsaber combat they perfected a lot of things that they introduced in the first game but the key thing that holds everything back and prevents it from firing off the way it should be from being praised the way it should be is the performance issues and what do you they're like what do you mean john what do you mean by the performance issues I thought EA would have learned by that time. Well, if you thought EA would have learned, then you're very fucking foolish. Anyway, this game right here, I went through it three times. 
two times by myself, new game, new game plus, then afterwards for uh, my Twitch run, which I'm still currently doing, but I'm taking my time with it. This game should have been one of the defining games. This could have been, this has the potential, if it came out the gate the way it should be, no glitches, no bugs, no frame rate, no optimization problems, this could have been contender for game of the year. And no, it can't be a contender later down the line, probably in a couple months to a year of it getting fixed. No, you have to look at the game the way it is now, okay? But what makes this review unique compared to all the others is that I don't burn through my games like that. I take my time and study all its aspects before I just make a video and start talking about it. Unlike most of the high gaming companies or game journalists that nobody listens to. Only a fool would listen to gaming journalists because you know what the gaming journalists are doing? They are ignoring the optimization problems. They're ignoring all its issues just to give the game an eights or nines. And no, that is not how it's going to be done here. And that's not how we're going to look at this game. Okay? We are literally living in the time of gaming where the gaming industry is churning out half-assed games. There could be really good games, but they don't optimize them properly. They don't go back and look to see, oh, how is the game running? Is it running better? No, the game should be running out the gate the way it should be. It should be running at all four cylinders or how many fucking cylinders that that reference goes for. The game should be running the way the trailers do it. Because you know what I got to say? When a trailer shows a game running perfectly and then on day one when it's not, that should be considered false advertising because it's not the game that is being advertised. Okay? Now, performance issues have been inconsistent across the board. From frame dips to stuff happening in the cutscenes to slowdowns to sometimes double screens that you won't notice. Yes, it has a lot of those. Now, in the smaller areas, the performance is not so bad. But it was when they tried to introduce these massive worlds, these, these open areas, that the game suffers the worst. Because I'm not going to front and tell you that all of it is the way it, it should no hell no the inter even jedi fallen order had its problems such as the stuttering issues and everything when it first came out but the areas were not super big they were very dungeon like and very condensed they were still linear though op though very open in different paths you can look uh, go down the different paths in the level it was still very linear and simply rehashing the concept of the first game just with a different story would not have worked. In fact, the story here probably would have suffered from that greatly. But, anyway, when you get into these big open world sections, it's very hard to get to what you need to do, such as loading in the area. I'm going to tell you guys the experience I had. So, when you turn off a lot of the settings on the either Xbox Series S or PS5 or the PC, which I know a lot of people want to play this game with the high capable rendering settings. But for now, you have to drop most of your settings down to at least make it run like a PS4 Pro game. And even when it does do that, it is struggling. Now the characters up close, the thing is the characters look fine up close, but they're, they have this weird little aura around them like the shadowy aura it's like the the shadow their body shadow doesn't catch up to the movement if that makes any sense i'm just telling you guys what i've experienced now the only thing i haven't had happen was i haven't had a game breaking bug or i haven't had a single crash in the time that i've played now i know people who are going through that who couldn't even finish or get through the game themselves so i count myself lucky that i didn't have any crashes going through the game but i did have a lot of problems when the optimization affects you during certain traversal areas like there's certain areas such as on jetta or kobo or these other worlds where you need to use wind 
or these wind currents to get yourself going. In the levels on Kobo, the wind level, like the little wind effects, don't even pop up. They're not even visible. So I had a hard time trying to get off this tower, flying down on one of the little flying creatures. Had a hard time getting to the bottom because of that. Because I couldn't see where the wind currents are and I wasn't building enough momentum to get out of the situation. To get out of the trouble I was in. That is bad when you can't even get through something as navigating the world without something happening. Certain enemy AI is still currently inconsistent. From playing on story mode where they're just basic to playing Jedi Knight all the way up to at least Grandmaster... The enemy AI is inconsistent, and that's when also the game struggles with the combat. On higher difficulties, you will struggle with the combat, okay? Like I said, they improved upon the combat, but if there's certain things they should have done, which are the bare basics, like a dedicated dodge button would have been nice, they were still missing a lot of aspects that the first game still didn't even have because even the first game didn't have some of these aspects if they should have drawn from any game it should have been god of war 2018 and god of war ragnarok and ghost of tsushima on how they handled the combat the open world it's actually more so ghost of tsushima because jedi are basically space samurais so you would think you would lean more into a combo based system rather than just okay you have a set independent set of moves and all your moves cross over because the first game fallen order a lot of people were saying there's three lightsaber cells no there's not there's only two and one of your combo abilities gets you double blades but all you had was a single blade and a dual sided lightsaber that was it and though yes both trees had a fair amount of leveling up to go about it you would still use the single blade because the double blade felt very underwhelming. But don't get me wrong, it works for the first game because that is your entry level point to going into this series. Now, they are still going to do a third game by my understanding. I mean, they are already in contract to do a trilogy based on Cal Kestis. So, if they can just take what they fucked up here, which is the performance, because in a later part of the video I'm going to explain what they did right what does set it apart but i'm giving you the honest truth about its performance and the performance is what holds this game back i mean the only argument i have seen from uh people are just from people that don't like big scale games they prefer the condensed 10 hour to 12 hour type of storytelling or hell even the six hour type of storytelling but for what? That's not really an improvement. That's just a rehash with a different coat of skin. If people do it for Call of Duty, that's one thing. But not every game needs to follow the mold of, okay, four-hour story, six-hour story, ten-hour story. Okay, it's over, and there's no replayability. That's the one thing that Jedi Fallen Order introduced was it gave you a solid replayability value where this game, if running the way it should have been, has intense replay value has a lot of replay value and for newer people playing the game i feel that there is kind of a con when it comes to explaining where our characters were i get that there's a book called jedi battle scars which they said that it's not necessary to read but i think if they would have just implemented more cutscenes and took pages straight from the book therefore we could see the condition of these characters but i do get this is the story of cal kestis and we are meant to see things through his perspective i did find it unique that at least in this game we did play from someone else's perspective a lot of people say oh it was disappointing playing from someone else's perspective no it was kind of refreshing to play from some see when you hear an argument like that just know they are looking at it from a very closed-minded perspective and they're looking at it from the okay if it doesn't meet the type of game requirements i like it's an automatic negative well then maybe this just wasn't the game for you if people prefer fallen order fallen order over this one that's fine but if you played this one and the only thing fallen order has over 
Jedi Survivor is that it performs well and it is playable. But that's really it. Had this game came out working the way it should on all cylinders without has a problem and if it came out to the game that it should have been I'm sorry but Fallen Order would have been stomped on Fallen Order is just the stepping stones Jedi Survivor is that true sequel vibe where you actually feel that yes this is a sequel things have progressed forward they're not covering the casual tropes of the Star Wars franchise they're going in a direction that is familiar yet new to us and I think that's what sets this series above anything else in Star Wars. The performance is inexcusable and Respawn and EA, you really need to fix this game and make it the game that it should be because there's absolutely no excuse going forward from this point on. Now, I'm going to go cross over to a segment where I talk about the positives of this game. Now, what Jedi Survivor does over Jedi Fallen Order is remarkable. Now that I've got the performance issues explained out the way, let me tell you everything they built upon from the first game. They have really, really went into trying to make this. Even though it's not an RPG, they still want you to role play in this universe. They really want you to feel like you are in the world of Star Wars, especially in a video game, because there's not that many Star Wars single player games anymore. And Fallen Order is putting us in a direction of where we can follow a story in a universe and it can still do things that the movies or the TV shows are scared to always do. From ways of combat, which is actually my favorite aspect when the game would run correctly and allowed me to unleash these attacks and powerful moves. The introduction of the four stances is the one thing that I feel is the biggest improvement. I've always wanted open areas, and I like God of War Ragnarok, so these open areas to the game really do hold my interest because I get to just go around and explore. But I'm always going through testing the different lightsaber combinations and lightsaber combos that you can mix together by having two stances to give yourself... To give yourself a level of balance so that you don't feel like an overpowered character still, you get to have multiple stances, and personally, I mean, my favorite being the gun blaster and the dual bladed stance, to the ways of traversal. And what I also really like, and a lot of people have agreed, is that the customization on Cal himself. I get that in the first game, he has to have an established look so we can know who he is, but they were not afraid to experiment outside of the ponchos and the different skins for just BD1. Here, you can customize Cal's hair, facial hair, different shirts, different undershirts, coats, pants. You can mix and match them to make the colors you like. And each this time, each stance in the game has an individual skill tree. And on top of having individual skill trees, since you can only take two with you at a time, it depends what are you going for with your character. They really let you craft the kind of Cal Kestis that you want to be. On top of adding perk points, something you find in the world, there's always a reason to go and search in the world to find something to better your character. Whether it be for his survival, lightsaber, or ability in the Force. There's always a reason to upgrade yourself. Now, if you find a style, a particular two styles that fit you, you can solely level up that skill tree, and it can carry you the whole way. I beat the first time around when I beat the game, I beat it with the single saber stance and the double bladed stance. Then I did gun and blaster stance, which gun and blaster is my favorite stance. It's the most unique combat style out of them all. It feels like you're more of a duelist, like Form 2 of Count Dooku, but you have a blaster to help protect you off of enemies that could be coming from any other direction. The Force powers have been expanded this time around to where you can literally fling enemies, throw them around, use mind control, more of the advanced Jedi abilities. 
there's also training to help you get into combat. Everything this time around is tied to the meditation circle. When it comes to doing your leveling up, your stances, you know, exp basically all you need to do, it's right there. Respawn health, even though it does respawn enemies, respawning your stim packs. The only thing you would still have to do, which also has a huge level of customization, highly improved over the first game, is the lightsaber customization. But the lightsaber is not the only thing that gets customized. This time you can craft the individual pieces to the lightsaber itself. Not just different hilts and little mid pieces and the bottom piece. No, this time from cross guards to the emitter to the hilt to the colors, BD1 individual customizable parts. And yes, even your blaster gets individual customized parts that you can make this weapon or these two weapons, basically your lightsaber and your blaster, very unique and tied to you. They feel like they really wanted you to feel like you're a Jedi in these dark times and you're finding all these nook and cranny pieces to basically protect yourself, craft weapons to be able to protect yourself. I mean, you can take weapon parts from classic weapons that we've seen in the saga, like Han Solo's uh, DL-44 pistol. You could craft other blaster parts on top of it to make it look different. You're going to be like, what the hell did I just make? But it's definitely going to blow a hole in somebody. Then, see, my favorite thing to always do in these kind of games is always find parts to make my weapons better. And Star Wars does that here in spades. You will go out and find different lightsaber attachments. You want to craft this experience for yourself. It's basically you're going along with the story, but you're still crafting your Star Wars experience. But at the cost, again, it needs to run properly. The game needs to be fixed, and it should not have come out in this state. Jesus, I felt another rant coming through. People will say, oh no, the performance of the game just makes it seem like the game is overall bad. No, that is a biased assumption and a biased statement. You need to acknowledge what's bad, yes, cover what's bad, and give it the absolute criticism it deserves. But don't conflate the good with the bad, because then that just creates a era of disingenuous nature, which is something that I had to learn the hard way when I used to make those mistakes, like I've said before. Now, going around this time on the map, there's familiar worlds and different worlds. And this time, these levels feel more unique than those in Fallen Order. Each of these planets, except for Coruscant, I gotta say, Coruscant and the final world you unlock in this game are very mini, uh, medium to small, but the other arena type levels that you go through are much bigger and much more expansive. They have their own enemy types. That's another thing this game did was enemy types and bringing back the battle droids. See, I love the battle droids. I love to battle the battle droids. I really do. I think a lot of people misinterpreted why they were in the game, but when you understand why they're here, it's a good excuse to have them here and slice them up again. And the other thing this game brought back that the other Star Wars game was lacking, dismemberment. What's the point of using a lightsaber if you cannot dismember? And using the different saber forms against different enemy types or against any enemy type in the game for real for that matter there are so many different kill animations with the lightsabers if you can hit them in that sweet spot to get that animation at least when you're in combat and the combat does run like it's supposed to then yes you are going to have a grand time fighting the empire but the one thing you need to know the empire is not the main focus of this game which is a good thing a lot of people were saying, oh, the Empire should have been this. That's a rehash. That's the problem. I'm glad the developers went in a direction that feels more like we're type tapping into both canon and Legends continuity. And I know a lot of people that don't like Legends, but to quote Chancellor uh, Palpatine, if one is to understand the great mystery, one must study all aspects of Star Wars, just not the dogmatic view 
a view of the, the films. If you wish to be a complete and wise leader, you must embrace a larger view of both the canon and the legends. That's the easiest way to do it. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. Well, too bad, tough shit, you're going to hear it from me. But, all jokes aside, this game has, still has, the potential to be a really great game. Probably within the coming months or toward the end of the year. It does. It has time to make a turnaround. But at the end of the day, the turnaround is not fast enough. And it should have been the game we were promised from the get-go. It really should have been. This game has aspects that improve upon what the first game was setting up in terms of being a Jedi, in terms of the overall themes. Because if there's one thing in this game that I truly enjoyed that was the icing on the top, but despite the appoint um, performance, was that Cal Kestis faces the dark side, and you can use the dark side in a very similar fashion to Kratos' Spartan Rage, which is actually really cool. See, that's the one thing I can say about this series and about this character of Cal himself. He himself is a character we can all attach to. Why? Because we're just not going to be wholly good or wholly evil. We have problems as individual humans, and we face these problems very differently. And it's also reflect in the characters. The characters, if that's another negative, like I said, really the only negative I have to say is they should have included more flashbacks or more time with the characters we know before we see, uh, I don't want to spoil, one of the fates of one of the characters from the first game, actually two characters from the first game, we see how their fate plays out. But it was set up that this could happen. You could feel it in the setup of the story. And I appreciate that they don't do show and tell like normal. They tell you through the dialogue. You see through the character's actions. You see where something could happen, even if you don't want to believe it or feel it, like such as betrayal and things of that nature. This game really is an improvement over the first game, held back by awful optimization and performance problems, held back by, I wouldn't say developer meddling, but corporate meddling to basically like, oh, we need to have this game out for this day in the dirt. You know, we have to push it no if i was in charge of one of these studios i would literally tell them take all the time you need to make this game i'd rather have had a delay and a perfected product than a game that's only working at 50 to 60 percent of what it should have been but anyway there's not much else i can say about jedi survivor it's an excellent game trapped beneath awful awful optimization corporate meddling deadlines and the refusal to delay any further you can blame respawn all you want but respawn has a great track record of games just look at who their bosses are and you'll understand how this game came out in the condition that it was in a lot of people and a lot of major outlets and journalists won't tell you that and they won't look into that because they'd rather be told the beautiful lies rather than the harsh truth. And you're hearing this from a Star Wars fan. Okay? I love this franchise. Grew up with it. And we all have that one franchise that we stick with through thick and thin. But we will not hesitate to call it out when it needs to be called out. And for me, that is Star Wars. It does break my heart. It truly does. But I had to do this for this game. I had to get on its case will this game eventually be the game that it should have been yes if i was to score it zero in optimization zero in performance zero in frame rate zero in anything that has brought the game down but in terms of story eight out of ten characters about a 7.5 out of 10 combat 10 out of 10 when it works exploration nine out of ten 
as much as there is negative, there is good to balance it out, as is the way of the force. There is the light side and the dark side. And that is with this review. Anyway, that's it for John Kill 3D Gaming. Be sure to like, subscribe, favorite. Check out my secondary channel, which is linked on my channel's description. And I will see you all in the next video. Be sure to take care, everyone.